Little portable fire pits like these have become really, really popular in the last few years, and with good reason. Uh, it's really cool to be able to sit and look at a fire and have a fire on your patio or whatever, but they definitely have a lot of drawbacks. As you can see, this one is, um, is, is a little worse for the wear, and they're also really, really difficult to cook on them unless you just want to cook, you know, hot dogs on a stick or something. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at this fire pit slash grill. Maybe it's a grill slash fire pit from the folks at Minuteman Provision. Super solid, very, very handy, and very useful. That's what's coming up next here on Survival On Purpose. Welcome back to Survival On Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. And if you've seen many of my videos, you probably know that I am a fan of fire. I like me some fire. I've been accused of being a pyromaniac, so uh, I'm pretty, pretty thrilled to be making this video right now. You may also remember a few months back, folks at Minuteman Provision sent me one of their ammo can rocket stoves, which was a really, really cool design. One of the best rocket stove designs I've ever seen. Uh, and it folds up into an ammo can, which is really cool. And we cooked some really good burgers on that one. They were really tasty. Well, we're going to cook some steaks on this one in just a minute, and we're going to talk about the specs of this thing. But first, here's a quick word from the longest running channel sponsor, my friends at Clickbelts. This video is sponsored by my friends at clickbelts.com where you can save 15% by using the coupon code SOP15 at checkout. Clickbelts feature genuine Cobra buckles and they are sewn right here in the USA in the great state of Texas. They've even got the really cool TSA friendly Poly Cobra buckle now. So if you're looking for a very, very strong, very cool belt, I encourage you to check out the folks at clickbelts.com. Don't forget, use the coupon code SOP15 to save 15%. Okay. I got down here where you could see me for just a minute, so um, I'm gonna get my ugly mug out of, out of the picture in a second here. We'll talk about the specs of this thing, and then um, we'll uh, get to cooking some steaks. So first of all, as you can see, this thing is super solid, made out of 10 gauge steel, eighth inch thick, and it's got some nice cutouts on it, which not only provide airflow, but look pretty cool at night when the fire's burning. Um, it is not a lightweight backpacking stove. This thing weighs 35 pounds, so it's portable, but um, it's, you know, it's, it's not super light, right? It's not an ultralight item. Uh, very, very well made. This thing is handmade in the USA in North Carolina. Features a three-year warranty. Got nice handles on the grill, and I like the fact that the grill slides either way so you can load wood in, in or out or charcoal, whatever you want to do. It also features six pre-cut notches here for shish kebabs that uh, allow for a 16 inch shish kebab str stringer so you can you can load up some shish kebabs on here and cook them and rotate them as you go which is pretty cool. Um, as you can see it has a really heavy duty frame around it here and then the, the uh, body of the grill itself is 16 inches long by 13 inches and it is seven inches deep to the rim here and then the grill surface cooking surface is 13 inches by 17 inches so nice size grill there this thing just sits in there you don't have to slide it you can lift it up on or off either way got these nice air holes around it and nice nice welded legs on here and the legs by the way are not hollow on bottom they got they got caps on the bottom of them which I think is a great attention to detail so when you set this thing down in the dirt or the sand or whatever it's not going to uh, fill up with dirt on you so that's pretty cool too again this thing has a three-year warranty and it's $299.95 so it's not super cheap but it is super super solid and every grill comes with a bag of <laughs> golden goodness these Maya sticks and this is some good fat man this is really really good fat wood it's uh, from Central America. I mean, just, just, just have a look at that, right? That's pretty cool. And if you use the coupon code SOP, you get another free bag of Maya sticks plus a free ferro rod. So that's a pretty cool deal too. So anything else you need to talk about? It's got some handles on, on the side here that are gonna get real hot when this thing's burning. So you need to be, be careful about that. You know, you're gonna need to use some gloves or something. And uh, also handles on the grill here. Now. The grill is made with 5 16th steel rod, so there's plenty of ample service. Six to eight burgers last for many years of use. And there we go. So one thing they do recommend is to, to wipe this down with, with oil, cooking oil, before you cook it the first time, and then keep doing that every time. Clean it. Um, what that'll do, that will allow it to uh, kind of 
kind of it's almost like seasoning cast iron. It allow it to kind of season and build up a uh, build up a uh, non-stick rust, rust kind of rust proof um, surface on it. So there's that. Just build us a fire. Okay. In the interest of um, just going as natural as possible and just showing you what's possible, we're going to go ahead and use just fat wood with no uh, no lighter fluid or anything like that and just wood and while I'm doing this let me just go ahead and tell you a couple things about cooking with wood so first of all what you want to really cook with wood for the most part especially if you're cooking steaks or meat is going to be coals as opposed to flame because flame is just going to make the outside of the char the outside of the uh, of the meat and not really you know cook it inside like like a broiler so you want you want coals in order to get those coals you gotta let the wood burn down Speaking of letting it burn down, you want to make sure that all the fat wood is burned up because fat wood really does good for starting fires, but it's gonna it, it's got a lot of resin in it. It's gonna make your, your your meat taste really bad, your food taste really bad. So you want to make sure this is all gone. Just going to use this really only just to get the fire going. And what I'm gonna do with it, I'm gonna take a couple little pieces and lay down here. Let me let me get you over here where you can see it. So this is my little um, improvised fire lay here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my favorite ferro rod, <laughs> which is right here, this little big lighter. I'm going to light up a couple of pieces of this fat wood. Light it here, and we'll light it down here, and let that catch up. And then I'm going to put some small pieces of wood across here, and just pile them on, right? And let them, see if this fat wood will get this stuff going without me making a lot of really tiny kindling. And that's, that's, that's my goal anyway. I'm going to try it. Because once the once the other wood gets going, it'll it should flame pretty well. So normally I would put a lot of really really small wood here, but we're going to try this just like like so, just to see how how well this fat wood actually works just by itself. Because that is some really good fat wood. And once these get going really well, I'll be able to put just some other wood on top of it. But I think we're going to wind up with a pretty good fire here in just a minute. And, and I'm, probably, I'm probably going overboard with it, but I can't help myself. I like to see it burn. By the way, the knife I was using is the uh, my MSK-1 right here. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So once the black smoke goes away, and then that'll mean the fat wood is pretty much burned up. But you can see the uh, non-fat wood is, is definitely catching fire now. Okay, so um, the other wood is fully involved as they say so it's burning really well I'm gonna let that burn for a minute and I'll put a couple of bigger pieces on there I want to try to minimize the amount of wood I'm putting on there because again it needs to get down to be coals before I can cook these steaks but I got to have a good bed of coals so while I'm waiting on that seemed like a good time to go ahead and go ahead and to just completely coat these things with cooking oil just to kind of um, help help keep your food from sticking initially and also kind of it'll help season them and build up a coating over over time so that it'll help prevent rust so i've got some just grapeseed oil I, I like using grapeseed oil it's got a high a very high oh well <laughs> i just got it all over my hands but it's got a very high burn temp and i'm just going to take and um put some on a paper towel and go ahead and rub this off and you can see still got a little suit a little blackness on it or whatever i'm not too concerned about that um we had a saying when i was in boy scouts that uh god made dirt and dirt won't hurt so <laughs> if you're super fastidious then maybe you want to really scrub these things real good i washed them off with soap and water but it takes a little while for that stuff to get off of there so we're gonna go ahead and put a little more oil on here see if i can keep it off my hands that'd be great the first initial time i think it's worth it's worth you know spending a little bit of time the first time you use it to go ahead and really um take a minute and prep it as, as you know really do a good job of getting oil on it because it's not gonna hurt it and it will definitely long term it'll make it last a lot longer and make it just be, be better for, for for cooking all right well we're gonna call that good um it's, it's you know it's it's not greasy but it's, it's good enough let's see what i can do with this now go ahead and uh, put a few bigger pieces on there get some mass going for these coals and by the way this will hold like i said it's 16 inches long so it'll hold up to a a lot longer piece of wood this is what i wound up with when i did a little little cutting earlier so and that'll give us enough to maybe get a good bed you know you know what what the heck man <laughs> you know me right okay 
I'm gonna give it one more little dusting of oil here and uh, I'm gonna call this thing ready to cook. Still got a little flame going, but I think it's gonna be okay. So I've got some grass-fed beef here because I like me some grass-fed beef. I've got two fillets and two ribeyes. It's gonna take these a little bit longer to cook probably because there's we're not right above the uh, the, the coals, like the coals are kind of down a couple few inches below, but it should still cook. And then we're gonna put a little bit of the old uh, red-eyed hog on there. A little sprinkle will do. And then also, I like the McCormick's Montreal seasoning myself too as well. Okay, well. I think I might be done here. I don't want to get too burnt. Let's just see. I'm gonna go ahead and go old school here with my uh, <laughs> Emerson knife. See what it looks like on the inside here. Oh, that's perfect medium, which is exactly how I like it. That's, oh my goodness gracious, I can't wait to eat this. So I'm gonna go eat and then I will come back after dark show you what this thing looks like in the dark all right well there it is kind of dark looking pretty stinking good so uh there you go we're, we'll wrap this up in the morning okay well uh hopefully that was some decent little night shots for you there real quick just show you how pretty this thing was when it does get dark these little uh, airflow cutouts kind of pretty as well so um as you can see we've Cut, burn this thing down totally to ashes except for a couple of sticks. So what uh, a couple real quick things they recommend Don't just leave these ashes in here. Make sure you dump them out uh, Especially if you can leave it outside where you know it might get wet because that's going to really promote rusting if you do so If you leave ashes and stuff in here, but I got lazy last night and did not clean this So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the grill and they recommend um, Re-oiling it after you clean it just to kind of help build up that 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 patina on it I guess kind of like seasoning and Store it up. So I got to say um, overall a couple of a couple of things um first of all there's a little bit of depth there's eight inches so it took the steaks a little bit longer than it might have if, if it'd been on a really shallow grill but i also cooked them a little slower which is kind of good the steaks by the way were absolutely delicious um, and i'm not the greatest steak chef in the world but i got them got them cooked just about right it works really really well i like the fact that you can use charcoal or you can use it as a just with wood ashes honestly for cooking charcoal is a lot easier you get a lot more even heat and you don't have to wait as long but um, the advantage of using wood is you can have a nice little campfire uh, while you're while you're eating or just sitting around So I think it's a pretty cool little, little deal here uh, Certainly it's not cheap at 300 bucks But again, uh, if you use the coupon code SOP, you get a free extra bag of fat wood and a ferro rod, but um, It's also extremely extremely solid I've got about a $300 gas grill that's lasted me about three or four years and it's starting to everything in it's starting the components are starting to, to wear out and rust out uh, There's nothing in here to tear up this thing is made out of heavy duty steel. Uh, if you take care of it, it'll last literally your lifetime. I'm sure just uh, take care of it. And um, I like the fact it's a really solid uh, steel grating, nothing to flake off there, nothing to, uh, to get, get messed up, just keep it from rusting. So anyway, that's the uh, Minuteman um, Provisions Firebox Grill. Thanks again to the folks at Minuteman for sending me this so I can show it to you. And as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and Saturday, sometimes random videos throughout the week. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single one, just in case I get canceled by cancel culture, because you never know, I invite you to go to survivalonpurpose.com slash subscribe. Get signed up for my weekly email newsletter. Every week I'll send you an email with links to videos and news offers and deals I think you might be interested in an occasional rant or two. And um, that allows us to stay in touch if youtube decides they don't like my stuff anymore so anyway um, i really appreciate the support once again my name is brian you're watching survival on purpose remember survival is not an accident so be prepared i'll see you next time